Alright man, Shalom, Yeshua, Shalom, Mr. Brother Ash Ibad, come back in the spirit, giving all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, Yahweh being the God of Israel, the God for the nation of Israel, by Hashem meaning in the name, and Yahweh Shai, the name of his only begotten son, the one that the world calls Jesus Christ. So anyways, brothers, man, I want to get into this lesson real quick, um, and basically what I'm going to be talking about is the spiritual man, because a lot of you brothers follow different camps, a lot of you brothers you know, uh, have your own understanding. But one thing that I've noticed and one thing that as I've grown and I've matured as a spiritual man is that a lot of times they don't talk about the fruits of the spirit. And basically the fruits of the spirit is essentially how you're gonna act when you become a spiritual man. Cause all y'all brothers know priests says, all y'all brothers know the Bible like the back of your hand. But what's the point about knowing the Bible? What's the point about having knowledge if you don't actually walk in it the right way? Just like the Christian church, a lot of these pastors, they know the Bible, they break the Bible down, but they break it down incorrectly. A lot of people who go to the Christian church, they claim to profess that they know God, they know Jesus, but they don't do any of the works. And like, Jesus, like quote unquote, Jesus said, like how I said, why will you call me Lord, 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 if you don't do the things that I say? So this is probably the most important thing because if you don't move in the spirit, the Lord is not going to deal with you. The Lord is going to cast you away. Let's read this. This is Revelation chapter 3, verse 1. It says, And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you live, that you live it, and are dead. And basically, when you brothers read in Revelation, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach was speaking to the seven churches right there are seven churches i think across asia or uh greece around that time asia minor area and essentially how had a message for each church now you also have to understand that those seven churches spiritually represent the different congregations of the brothers and the sisters who come into the fold in the understanding of the israelites the so-called blacks latinos the indigenous natives so essentially, when you look back at those churches in those times, it was also a foreshadowing on what the landscape would be for those of us in, you know, this modern day time, whether in Babylon, whether in Europe, whether in Africa, whether in South America, et cetera, et cetera. So when it says, I know your works and that you have a name that you live in and are dead, this is speaking on a church who Yahweh Shah Hamashiach was working with, who he was dealing with, but essentially they went away from the righteous works. And they became dead again. They became dead to sin. They became dead to iniquity. Essentially, they backslid and they went back into what they were before. More than likely, they were in a Gentile state. Now, let's read verse 2. It says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before your Howard. So that's what you got to understand. How is it that the Savior is saying that your works are not perfect if they say that you're not, you don't need to do works, you don't got to follow the laws, the commandments. You can still go and live in sin, commit iniquity, rob, steal, kill, eat pork, do these things. How is it that the Savior is telling you that if your works aren't perfect, I'm not going to see you as acceptable if at the same time the Christian church tells you that you're not dealing with works? Again, somebody's lying. So when you get the true understanding of the Bible and you speak on how the Savior, he had perfect works and he wanted you to follow in his example, it's basically showing you the blueprint on how you can get everlasting life, right? The Lord's not going to give you something without putting no work, without putting no time, without putting no energy. Remember the scriptures say, whatever man reap, I mean, whatever a man reap, uh, whatever a man sow is what a man reap. So the things that you put in on a daily basis, they're being reaped, even if you don't believe it. Something that you may have did two, three, four, five years ago can be manifest unto this day. And you have to understand the reason why your deeds aren't judged immediately is because you're in a time of grace. Like example, if a loan shark came to you and said you owe $10,000, you either got to pay that right now. What do they do? They give you a grace period to get yourself together to allow you to get the money to pay them. Well, essentially on a spiritual aspect, the Heavenly Father has given everybody a time of grace, a time of mercy, where he's not judging you. Because back in the old time, if you committed adultery, you'll get stoned to death. If you committed idolatry, you'll get stoned to death. You see what I'm saying? These are things that if you did it, it would be immediate judgment. He's not doing that right now. But as the world gets into more and more chaos, the judgment of what the, the families of the earth are doing, the judgment of what the nations on earth are doing, and in particular, the house of Israel, what you so-called blacks are doing is going to come into manifest. And that's when you're going to start to see a lot of people dying, a lot of people starving, a lot of people going into chaos, a lot of people having 
demons on their mind because essentially the Lord is going to allow um, allow everybody's works to manifest. So you have to be able to understand that. And that's what truly being repentant, that's what truly being born again is. It's not confessing that you love the Lord and being the same nigga that you... And I want to get into this because essentially a lot of y'all brothers say, why are you still a nigga? Because if you understand what the word nigga really means, it just means a so-called black man. In fact, if you go back to the word nigger, it means black man. If you read Acts chapter 18, verse 1, many of the men called Peter a nigger because they understood who he really was. He was a so-called black man. But in today's term, when you think of nigger, what do you think of? Stupid, ignorant, no understanding. Why do you think they call you black? Because you're void of light. And what it really means is you're void of spiritual light. Not meaning you can't see, but you went away from the way. That's why when you read in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, the Lord said, if you do the things that I say, you will have life, you will have peace. But being that we're so rebellious, we're so hard-headed, like a quote-unquote nigga, we've gone away from the Heavenly Father, which is why we're in the curses that we're in right now. So the reason why we say you got to stop being a nigga, it just basically means you got to stop being the man that you were before. I'm guilty of it. Anybody who's watching, listening to this is guilty of it. So long story short, if you're not a nigga, you become a spiritual man. You become an Israelite. You become converted. The scriptures say, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. It's a conversion process, right? So when you go to the book of Ezekiel and you go to chapter 37, it's prophesied that there will be a group of Israelites who the Lord will place the spirit in. And I want to basically get into what that's talking about. This is Ezekiel 37, chapter uh, 2. It says, they caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and they were dry. And we think about that valley, what did, what did King David say? Though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, he wasn't literally in a valley with mountains around him. He was in a place where there was people who were dry, who were dying because they were going against the Heavenly Father. So in this time period, we're in a valley of dead. We're in a valley of dry bones. When you think about something that's dry, it has what? No water. The living water is the understanding of the Bible. You get spiritual water. That's why when Christ said, any man who believeth on me will drink of the water, will have uh, rivers of flowing water flowing from his mind. Essentially, when you believe in Yahweh Shah and you allow him to come into you, you get that spiritual water. You get that spiritual life again. Now, going back into verse 3, and he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? Meaning, can these people live again? And I answered, O Lord, Yahweh, you know it. Again, the Lord said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. So, long story short, that's why you have different camps, whether they be. Essentially, that's why you have different camps of Israelites come out and speak. They're preaching the word. They're preaching the water unto those who are lost, right? The lost sheep of Israel, correct? It says, verse 5, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinnels upon you, and will bring flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And what is the breath? The breath is the laws, the statutes, and commandments. Whenever Adam was created, the Lord breathed life into him, meaning what? He gave him his ways. Because essentially for you to be a ruler, you have to have rules that other people abide by. That's when the scripture said that Adam was above all the other beasts. He was meant to rule. And essentially the so-called black man, you are meant to rule. Why do you think they call you a king? Why do you think they always call you a king? Why does the scripture in Psalms say you are a God on the earth? Meaning that you are a judge. You are supposed to be a great judge, but you have to have life in you. How can you be a judge and you lead other people to death, right? That's why Yahweh Shah was the ultimate judge because he had the key to life and he also had control over death. You see what I'm saying? So long story short, when, this, when the Lord says, I will cause breath to enter unto you, it meant that I will cause the understanding of the Bible and what's commanded of you to come unto you. That's why when you go to the Christian church, you're still dead because the Christian church doesn't tell you the ways of the Heavenly Father. The Christian church tells you, love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as thyself. But at the same time, the Christian church is telling you to do things against what the Bible says. And remember, the transgressions of the law is what? Is death. So if you don't follow the law, they're leading you to your own destruction. That's why it says the blind lead the blind because you got blind pastors who can't see that are leading you off a cliff. They're not really showing you the way. But the scripture says, I will give you pastors a liking unto your own heart and they will teach you the true way. That's why when you look at the prophecy, the scripture said, the gospel will come across the four corners of the earth and then the end will come. But Christianity has been around for thousands of years. How is it that it's been preached around the four corners of the earth and the earth hasn't been destroyed yet? 
because that wasn't the true understanding of the Bible. But in this modern day time, the dry bones, the Israelites are getting life and they're springing up. And now what's happening? You have a lot of people trying to cast away the good works. So essentially, for you to become a new man, you have to repent and you have to come into the understanding on what the Heavenly Father requires of you. This is verse six, it says, I will lay sinnels upon you that's, that's, and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin. So if you're a bone and you have skin, your skin is representative of your life. So you will be quote unquote what? You will be born again, right? And put breath into you. Breath is what gives you the life to be able to breathe, to be able to speak, to be able to talk. And you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. And essentially when you're born, you actually understand who the Lord is. You understand that quote unquote God is good but he can also give you evil. You also understand that Yahweh what? He requires you to uh, move in his law, statutes, and commandments. And the key thing is that you understand his judgments. When you go to Psalms 147 verse 19, it says, um, uh, I have given my laws unto Jacob, my statutes unto, uh, unto Israel. I have not dealt so with any other nation. So if you don't understand his laws, the judgment that's coming upon the earth and his statutes, that means that the Lord is not dealing with you, showing you that he only deals with one true nation. Now I want to get into this. This is uh, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1 to get back into what I said about what gives you life in this world. So this is Revel uh, Salaki. This is uh, Proverbs chapter 3. And we'll go to verse 1. It says, My son, forget not my law, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add unto you. So basically when you understand the law, statutes, and commandments, two things happen. First and foremost, you get life on this side. You get some type of, like a, a, like you know, like a heart is dead. What do they do? They shock it and then it comes back to life. So essentially you get some type of life. You get some type of connection back to the heavenly father because he's essentially the power source, right? That's why you call him God. He's a power, he's your power source, right? But also if you do it, it shall add length and days into your life. And what is the ultimate goal? To have everlasting life, to not be able to be killed, to not be able to, uh, to go off. Because essentially the reason why you die is because you commit sins and you commit transgressions, right? Now getting into uh, chapter John, let's go to John chapter 6. So this is John chapter 6. Let's go to verse 63. I read verse 62, it says... What and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth in the flesh profit nothing. So the Spirit is what raises you up. For you to be raised, quote unquote, from the dead, the Spirit has to come in you because your flesh profit nothing. Your flesh is what leads you to death. That's why Yahweh Shah said, the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So you constantly in a battle of life and death. You know how people in this world, they're constantly trying to do what? They're trying to live, they're trying to survive, they're trying to get bread, that way they don't essentially die. Well, there's another way of living and it's on a spiritual aspect that the vast majority of people on earth can't see. That's why the scriptures say, blessed are your eyes for they can see and your ears for they can hear. So essentially what this means is that you are blessed if you have some type of understanding to be able to see the spiritual battle of life and death. And when you come into the fold, that's why this is so hard. Because essentially, you're not only warring to try to survive, but the main war is the war against principalities, the war against demons, the war against the lust of your flesh to try to abstain from those things so that way the Lord can see you as perfect because he knows that we're not going to be able to not sin. He knows that we can't be perfect like his son. But essentially, it's about trying your best. The Lord knows your heart. The Lord can read your thought. He can read every single, every single uh, thought that comes out of your mind. So essentially for you to have life, it comes through the spirit. It says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. And that also comes into the understanding on when the scripture says, those of you who believe on him, it's not literally telling you, if you hear about the testimony of Yahweh Shai and you just say you believe it right then and there, that you will be saved. But when you truly believe in something, you what? You follow it. Like a lot of people believe in the Black Panther Party. What did they do? They followed it. They gave their life unto it, right? Essentially, they, they transformed their life. They believe in their ability. A lot of, how you doing, brother? Nice to meet you, man. 
Hey, I think I seen you last yeah, time, right? Yeah. You been good? Yeah, I try. I feel you, man. It's good. Try, you know? Yeah, it's good talking with you, man. I'm glad you. I'm glad you're doing alright. I love the way you preach, man. Hey, I appreciate that, man. I mean, I, I can't take credit. I give credit to the Heavenly yeah, Father, yeah, brother. Yeah. But hey, man, it's hey, good talking with you, man. Okay. She trying to get into it. No, she's trying to understand what, trying to understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. She don't speak the same. Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 That's cool, man. How long? How long y'all gonna be there for? I gotta. I gotta go work. Okay. Yeah. You welcome. You welcome. I'm gonna just do this, and I'll probably talk to you a little later. Yeah. What's your name again, brother? I forgot. Gary. Gary? Ah, right, Brandon, man. Good talking with you, man. All right. Brandon who? Yeah, he. Oh, it's uh Young High Flyers. Young High Flyers. Okay, yeah, yeah. It. It's on YouTube. I got a YouTube right. channel. Young High Flyers. Young High Flyers. Hey, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, yeah. Got to break it down for him. Don't make it complicated. Right, right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yelling, yelling, and screaming. <laughs> You don't really get it, yeah, 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 yeah. You try to make it easy, man. You know how like, you drink water and go down quickly. It's not, it's not, a, it's not hard for you to understand it. You gotta make it real simple for people, especially if they ain't never read the Bible before. You know what I mean? But yes, sir. I appreciate that, man. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna finish this, but hey, good talking with you, brother. Oh, I appreciate that, yeah, man. Appreciate you. But yeah, but yeah, shalom, brothers. Um. Getting back into what I was speaking of in regards to John 6 and 63, it says, It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But they are there are some of you that believe not. And the point that I was getting into, I remember now, is essentially a lot of people, they, they say, I love Jesus. I believe in Jesus. But when you listen to this verse, it says, The words I speak unto you are spirit and life, but some of you believe not. And essentially, it goes into the fact that believing is not just professing something, but actually following it. Like, example, if I were to come to you and say, hey, do you believe that you can make it to the NBA? Somebody who truly believes that they can make it to the NBA is going to start to do what? They're going to try everything in their power because they have belief in themselves. A lot of times when you live your life, there's certain obstacles that you may come through and you may wonder, can I really do that? Can I really become that? But essentially, you believe in yourself, you deal with the hards and the lows. And this is the same thing. When you believe in something, you're going to follow it whole, wholeheartedly. The scripture says, what is the first great commandment? You will love the Lord with all your heart, your mind, your soul, meaning what? You'll give everything unto it. And that's what most people can't understand. You see, in America, they have this thing that if you just participate, you good. Well, that's not how it is with the Heavenly Father. You can't be in this thing for three days, two months, one year and say that you made it the scripture says he that endureth unto the end shall be saved so those who take and give a life unto it and they fully devote themselves to it those are going to be the ones who make it whereas those of y'all who is just right foot in left foot out hot and cold you know what i'm saying you're not gonna make it bro but get back into the point so understanding that the word gives you life you have to do what you have to live your life by it that's the key thing I can't even sit here and tell y'all brothers to remember the Bible, but to live your life according to the Bible. And not just according to the Bible that the world tells you, but to the true understanding. Because there's a lot of false prophets out here who will lie to you and deceive you and tell you that the Bible is speaking this way when in actuality it's not. Essentially, you got to read the Bible like, like me. I got these glasses. When you first get your glasses, they give you different lenses, right? And some lenses is clear and some lenses is blurry. Well, essentially, those people who give you the proper lenses are the people who are the right teachers. The false teachers, they'll blind your eyes. That way you can't really see it. You see what I'm saying? When you open the scriptures, you don't even know what it's talking about. But when you get that true lens to be able to see and understand it from the proper context, that's what it will allow you to actually get to be able to understand, right? To be able to see with your spiritual eye, your quote unquote third eye, if you want to call it that, right? Now, again, let's get into 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. I can't make this too long. I got to do something um, a little bit later. But let's go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. Lord willing, I can get through this uh, pretty quick. Not quick, but you know what I mean. So this is 1 Peter chapter 2. We'll go to verse 4. It says, "To whom?" let me read verse 3. It says, if so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious 
to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men but chosen of god and precious ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to yahweh by yahweh shah hamashiach so when you understand that in this time in this age the sacrifices that we give unto the lord are not physical why is that because the physical sacrifice was the lamb the blood of yahweh shah hamashiach right so essentially instead of you giving the daily physical sacrifice like a lamb you know a mule you know uh, a goat things like that you offer up spiritual sacrifices that's why when you read the lord's prayer it says give us this day our daily bread it wasn't literally talking about physical unleavened bread bro it was talking about spiritual bread the bread sent down from heaven right so essentially each and every day you're offering a spiritual sacrifice unto the lord some of it may be good but some of it may be bad you get what i'm saying when you go to uh let's go to the book of mark chapter 9 and i touched on this before in some other lessons but this is mark chapter 9 verse 49 it says for everyone shall be salted with fire meaning what everybody will be tried with fire whether it be through tribulation really just through tribulation that's when you truly see if somebody's really about the heavenly father now anybody can be a part of the heavenly father when you got a million dollars but how is it when you in prison playboy how is it when your woman left you how is it when your best friend betrayed you how is it when you struggling when the powers that be is trying to take everything away from you that is the fire the tribulation that comes upon all the people who believe and just in general the entire earth is going to be tried with fire and it says every sacrifice shall be salted with salt salt is good but if the salt has lost its saltness wherewith will you season it have salt in yourself and have peace with one another so essentially when you are that sacrifice if you have that salt or that seasoning that means you have the true way you have the true understanding and you are becoming a sweet savor unto the lord because the things that the lord loves is a good scent the things that the lord hate is a wicked sin and the lord is going to do what he's going to destroy and cast off those with the wicked sin those who had the offering of cain compared to the offering of abel you see what i mean and in order for you to have an offering of abel you have to do things that are pleasing to the Lord. You have to follow him. You have to be obedient to Yahweh. You have to be obedient to the ways that he stipulated through the prophets and through his son. You see what I'm saying? Otherwise, you're going to become wicked and you're going to start to do what? You're going to start to lean on your understanding. That's why the scriptures say, trust in the Lord and lean not onto your own understanding. Because you lean onto your own understanding, you're going off. That's essentially what it is. The Lord keeps you on the straight path, the straight and narrow. Keeps you, keeps you steady, keeps your eye on the prize. But when you start to try to uh, justify things with your own understanding because your mind is wicked above all, that's when you start to quote unquote go off. Does that make sense? Now getting into the main things in regards to this, you brothers also have to understand this. We're coming into a time period where the Lord's true chosen are going to be revealed. How are they going to be revealed? Let's read this. This is John chapter 4 verse 22. It says, you worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And the spirit is what? Spirit is moving in the spirit. Spirit is doing things because the spirit is what allows you to be able to follow the heavenly father the right way. If you don't have the spirit, if you're not being guided by the comforter, essentially you're just going off. You're like a Christian, right? So when you worship him in spirit, it means you, you do the things that are required of the heavenly father to see you as a worthy sacrifice. And in truth, in truth means in sincerity, right? Truth means having the proper understanding, whether it be what the Bible is really saying, but also just fully believing in the Lord in full sincerity. And you can't worship the Lord in spirit without having the truth and vice versa. So when you read it and it says the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the father in spirit in the last day, in the last hour, when the true people of the Lord, the true people that the Lord has chosen are going to worship him fully. And the Lord is going to see them as his people and he's going to what? He's going to pardon all their sins, all their wickedness and all their transgressions. Because ultimately we're given grace, but we haven't been deemed chosen in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. We haven't been deemed worthy in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. Now this is key right here. Verse 24, it says, Yahweh is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you don't have those two aspects, if you don't have the spirit aspect and the truth aspect, then you can't really worship the Heavenly Father. And that's why... One of the biggest uh, uh, truth, uh, truth bags is that the vast majority of people on earth 
don't follow Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah in spirit and in truth. And in fact, the most most people who claim to be Israelites don't do it either. That's the key aspect. And that's why you brothers got to be very careful because just because you got some knowledge, just because you stumbled on a video and you think that you're doing what the Lord tells you in your mind doesn't necessarily mean that the Lord is dealing with you. That's why you got to constantly do what? Evaluate yourself and see if you are truly being the man that the Lord wants you to be. And getting to the understanding on what the Lord wants you to be, that's why you have to read the Gospels. Because essentially the Gospels is the foundation. That's the rock. That's about who? Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. That's why you brothers got to do your best to understand what spiritual works you have to do. What you have to do to become transformed. And what's going to allow you to get into the kingdom compared to what's going to keep you from the kingdom. That's why you got to be very weary of certain teachers who tell you that it doesn't matter what you do, you're gonna make it anyway, because that's gonna give you a false understanding that you can just come as is. That's just like what a Christian would tell you. So this is Galatians chapter four, it says, let every man prove his work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth all good things. Be not deceived, Yahweh is not mocked, for whatsoever a man shall sow it, that shall he reap also. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And that's why the key aspect of verse 7 is the most high is not mocked. Whatever you sow is what you reap. And when you come into the fold, you start to get the understanding of righteous judgment. Because in Christianity, they teach you that nothing that you can do is bad. That everything that you do is perfectly fine. And that all you need is the blood of Jesus and you'll be perfect. When that's not true, you have that as a grace for your shortcomings and for your inevitable shortcomings being in this wicked flesh. Like Paul said, I am in wretched, I'm a wretched man. I'm in wretched flesh. He understood his nature being in the flesh, right? But that's not an excuse for you to just do whatever you want without having any type of repercussions. And essentially, we're coming to the time where those of y'all who the Lord is not dealing with, he's going to allow all your works to manifest, man. All your works, bro. All your works. And if you don't deem it worthy, you're going to get what? You're going to get plagues. You're going to starve to death. You're going to uh, uh, thirst to death, right? Your family going to get killed. You're going to get sent out to war. You're going to get sent into prison. And essentially, the Lord is going to allow you to be cast off. Not saying that those of y'all who are doing the things right unto the Lord aren't going to have these things have some of the things happen to you but what do you have at the end you have the opportunity of everlasting life compared to those who are reaping flesh they're gonna go through all types of hell and hardships and then essentially they're gonna get the fire at the end so you have to be able to understand what the fate of uh, your works is giving you and when you also understand this that in order for you to be a spiritual man you have to be dealing with your how shot that's another thing that most people don't understand is that if you don't believe truly in Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, then the Lord is not dealing with you. So we'll go to uh, John 15. This is John chapter 15. We'll go to verse 1. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, he taketh away. So every branch, every every congregation, every quote unquote church that isn't being bared with Yahweh Shah. Is taken away, meaning it's purged out. If you are essentially a wicked fruit, if you are if you are a wicked uh, branch or wicked tree, and you start to bear fruit, you know, corrupted uh, with lust of the flesh and things of the world, the Lord is going to take you out. He's going to pluck you out. And sometimes it's gradually, but sometimes it's suddenly. You have certain men who bugged out and they were just completely out of the truth, and then you have other men who are under the delusion that they're in the truth. But the Most High is just deluding them and allowing them to wax worse and worse and worse. And only those people who have a spiritual eye to see are going to be able to tell that. Because if the Lord isn't dealing with you, he can either let you know straight up. I mean, essentially, bro, if the Lord's not dealing with you, you will have a false delusion in thinking that you're fine anyway. Because anybody who left the truth and came back into the world, you want a delusion thinking that the Lord is, is pleased with you. And anybody who believes that they're in the truth and yet they're justifying their wicked actions, you want a delusion anyway because... Again, the Lord is going if the Lord is really dealing with you, he's going to chastise you. He's going to reproof you, he's going to rebuke you, and he's going to correct you. So if you think that you're perfect in everything you do, then the Lord obviously isn't dealing with you. It's that simple. Let me, let's continue on. It says, "Every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, of itself except it abide in the vine." No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. So Yahweh was letting you know, professing unto you, 
The only way that you can be a spiritual man is through Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Adam was the, the fleshly man, the carnal man, the earthly man. Yahweh Shah was what? The spiritual man. The soul, the, the spirit that quickeneth, right? That's why he was our redeemer. That's why he was our savior, because we were in a dead state uh, trying to justify our dead works that couldn't be deemed uh, uh, as acceptable unto the Lord. That Yahweh Bah Shem Yahweh Shah had to send down his son in order to bring us and bring us back into the fold. That's why you have to listen to Yahweh Shah Hamashiach and do all the things stated unto him. Because if you don't do all the things stated unto him, like Exodus chapter 23, verse 21 says, uh, Beware of him, provoke him not, but obey his voice, for he will not pardon your transgressions. Now, getting back into the main point, let's go to the book of Isaiah, and we're going to go to chapter 11. So that way you can understand what the spirit really is. This is Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. It says, There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, right? So long story short, the spirit of the Lord, there's seven spirits. You got wisdom. What? What is wisdom? It's a long sense of understanding because there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is when you get understanding, you read certain books, you read certain articles, you get knowledge. But wisdom is when you see what you read under the knowledge and you know what you need to do and not do. Like wisdom is if you got burnt, you understand you have wisdom to know that you can't put your damn hand on the stove so that way it can be burnt. Same thing if you were, if you were a dude and you had a heart attack. Through your experiences, you understand what caused you to have a heart attack. Not eating well, not taking care of your body certain things certain conditions so essentially the heavenly father gives you to give you the full spirit you have to have knowledge you also have to have wisdom which is learning from your experiences offending less over time compared to doing the same dumb shit that you've been doing since the beginning and also understanding understanding why the heavenly father doesn't deal with everything understanding why the heavenly father must destroy two-thirds of our people understanding why you go through what you go through because if you don't understand things you're gonna constantly question and rebel against them whereas if you have an understanding you understand your role you understand your part and you understand the greater uh, arching of the movie the things that you are meant to understand we can't understand the Heavenly Father all the way. His ways are not like our ways. He's above us. He's from above. We're from below. But essentially, the things that you need to understand about the truth, He'll give you the understanding. Continuing on, the spirit of counsel. What is counsel? To be able to take advice, to be able to take correction from other people, right? To not be high-minded. To not be uh, on a high horse thinking that you know everything, right? Also, uh, the spirit of might. Might is to be fearless, to be like that lion. That true lying that all you brothers are inside if the Heavenly Father deals with you. To have the might to rebuke, to have the might to correct, to have the might to reproach, to have the might to be able to stand against the powers that be, to have the might to be able to deal with all the affliction that's going to come upon the earth that the Lord is going to try everybody, starting with the house of Israel first, right? And um, the spirit of knowledge and then, of course, the fear of the Lord. Because essentially, if you don't fear the Lord, you're not going to do the things stated and you're not going to move like Noah. He understood and he had fear of what the Heavenly Father was going to do to the earth that he what? He started to work on creating the ark, building the ark, and warning his people. And essentially, brothers is trying to come into the spiritual ark, and we're doing what we can to warn our people and to, to most importantly, make our calling and our election sure. That's a true man who fears the Heavenly Father, man. You have to do everything to make your calling and election sure. Because if you don't have fear, that means you don't care what's going to come upon this earth. But when you fully understand the power and the magnificent power, the terrible power of the Heavenly Father, you're going to move accordingly. You're going to move with some type of, um, how you know, you got some pep in your step. You know, people say you got pep in your step. You moving because you're not trying to get caught up in what's going to come upon you. So that's what the spirit is. But one thing that a lot of Jakes get caught up in is they get caught up in the understanding or the knowledge aspect. They want to read all these books, read all these books. And one thing that you got to understand, and I was guilty of this before, is that just because you get knowledge does not mean that you're in the truth, bro. The Pharisees had a lot of knowledge. They understood the prophecies. They understood the law. But why were they cast off by Yahweh Why were they rejected by Yahweh Why did Yahweh not deal with them? Because they were of their father, the devil. They, they, weren't, they weren't fruitful unto repentance. You see, repentance, you have to come in a state where you understand that you went off. Where you understand that you're just a, a creature. You're just, you're just the pot. You're not the potter. 
And essentially a lot of Israelites, we have too much pride to not understand that we're literally, only reason why we're here is because of the Heavenly Father. So if the Heavenly Father is sending somebody unto you to be your example, if you don't follow him, then essentially the Lord won't deal with you, bruh. Because you're rebellious and rebellion is like unto idolatry and stubbornness unto witchcraft, right? So you have to understand this. Just because you have knowledge doesn't mean that the Lord is dealing with you. This is Sirach chapter 37 verse 19. It says, there is one that is wise and teaches many and is unprofitable to himself. And these are the teachers who have great breakdowns and things like that, but they're moving after the flesh. I'm not even going to bring out the names, but y'all brothers understand and you see a lot of brothers, they're essentially doing what? They're teaching you. They're trying to convert you. But like the, uh, like the Pharisees said, you, uh, like Yahweh I said to the Pharisees, you travel too and far to get a convert, you make him double a children of hell than yourself. Meaning you make him worse than your state. You in such an off-put state, you in such a reprobate state, that the people that you convert, you're making them two times as bad. And you're making it two times as hard as for them to get that new wine, to get that new garment. So essentially you have to understand that just because you have some knowledge and, and wisdom doesn't mean, or knowledge and, and understanding of the truth doesn't mean that you are a profitable work. The reason why Yahweh Shai is the best example is because he had all the knowledge in the world, but he moved, he walked the walk, he talked the talk. He didn't talk the talk, but he walked the walk. A lot of men talk the talk, but a lot of men are actually becoming living embodiments of the word. And that's the hardest part of it. I'm not saying that teaching and studying, going out and, and preaching, that's hard too. But outside of that, that's not your foundation. Your foundation is the works that you do on a daily basis. Having profitable works, being, in, being sincere, being in the fold, not being a nigga with understanding, not being a fleshy nigga who knows all the precepts of the Bible and that you're Israelite because that doesn't mean anything, bro. What's the point of wearing a fringe shirt? What's the point of wearing a fringe shirt if you're not if you're not representing what those fringes mean? If you're not doing your best to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. And a lot of things what people do is they like to self-justify their own works compared to understanding that the only person who can justify your works is Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah. That's why, in my opinion, one of the most important scriptures, even though it's, it's, it's fairly simple when you when you read it, let's go to it real quick. It's in uh, 2 Corinthians. We're going to go to chapter 13, and we're going to go to verse 5. It says, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith, and prove your own selves. Know you not your own selves, how that Yahweh Shai Hamashiach is in you, except you be reprobate. So the only way that you can have Yahweh Shai Hamashiach is if you're not a reprobate. And when you read Romans chapter 1, I think it's verse 25 down to 27, but throughout the epistles and throughout, um, you know, the different uh, letters of Paul, and uh, Peter and John, you know, James, etc. They give you certain examples of what a reprobate spirit is, a reprobate mind is. So if you're a reprobate, that means your house shot not dealing with you. If you a Jake and you committed homosexuality, if you a Jake and you committed adultery, if you a Jake and you believe that the heavenly father and the son are one, if you believe that we're created from carbon, you're in a reprobate mind. Because essentially the, the Heavenly Father is not dealing with you for you to even be thinking some things like that. If you're going out stealing and robbing, claiming to be an Israelite. If you're going out again, if you're going out and you're a, a fleshly man, that means that you're in a reprobate spirit. Because there's only one spirit and the spirit is going to what? It's going to allow you to come back into spiritual works, not earthly, fleshly works. Not saying that when you're in the spirit, you're not going to go off from time to time. That's natural. But again, you got to examine yourself daily and see the vast majority of the time, am I in the spirit or am I one of these 50 50 ass dudes? Am I one of these 25? I read the scriptures one time a week and I follow it on the Sabbath, but then the other six days I'm not doing anything. Essentially, bro, you have to realize that everything you do on a day to day basis, whether it's things in the world, it always manifests itself in the time when you need it most. A great example sports, fighting, right? You can always tell whether a fighter really prepared himself based off of the fight. Essentially, the work he put in, his conditioning, it always magnifies itself in the middle of a game, in the playoffs, right? Everybody putting up 30 points in a regular season, but in the playoffs, you're averaging 15 because you're getting exposed. The, the lights are showing you, the pressure showing you who you really are. And essentially, that pressure is what's going to come upon us in this thing is the tribulation and the anguish. It's going to be revealed to you in that day who is really a man of the Lord compared to who is just capping, who is just pump faking, who is lying to themselves and lying to the congregation so they can get some clout, so they can get some money. Some brothers quiet, quiet is kept. 
they sign for 501 c3 contracts some brothers is agents that's just how it is so you don't want to get into that point because you also have to understand this if you're moving in the flesh it's easier for satan to tempt you the reason why a lot of brothers took those contracts is because they were never in the spirit because ultimately the spirit is given to you by your howl and it's taken away so there's no way that you would truly love your howl and sell out your people it's not it's not it's not possible it's only if the Lord took you away. And essentially, if the Lord took you away, it's something that you did in our mind. Now, ultimately, it's up to predestination. But in this physical realm of existence, existence, if the Lord took away the spirit, it's because of something that you did that offended him. And the Lord didn't give you mercy anymore. So understand that you will be judged off your works. Don't let a Christian lie to you, bro. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 6. It says, therefore, we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may accept of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. So don't let a Christian tell you that you're not judged by your works because that is a false doctrine, that's a lie. You can read in 2nd Ezra, it says that those in those last days will be saved by faith and by works, right? So the faith is the, the foundation and you are justified by the works. Let's actually, uh, let's actually get that in the book of James. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but let's bring it out. So we'll go to James, I think it's chapter two, verse 11. This is the book of James chapter 2 verse 17 actually. It says, even so faith if have not works is dead being alone. So if you claim to have faith in this thing, don't be like a Christian and say you have faith but do no works. Eat pork after you pray. They say you, you say a prayer to God and you eat some swine, bro. <laughs> you say a prayer to God and then behind the scene the priest is molesting little girls and little boys. Saying you a man of God but then you go into these pansexual orgies and you having sex with other men. That's what you don't want to be because ultimately, Proverbs 15 and 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the good and the evil. The Lord can see what you're doing, bro. The Lord is everywhere. I think there's a scripture in Sirach where it says, the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. And he's seeing every work be manifest, bro. Don't think that you've been hitting on another man's wife in the, in, uh, in the DM, you deleted it, that the Lord isn't seeing what you're doing, bro. And that's why a lot of these brothers get exposed. They do dumb shit and they wonder why it gets brought on Fun Street. Essentially, it's because the Lord allowed it to come into fruition. Like Yahweh Shah said, no stone will be left unturned. And every, every, uh, every, everything in the dark will be brought into the light. So essentially, if you are a children of the light, or if you are, if you are children of the dark, then it will be brought into the forefront. Whereas if you are children of the light, this is what's going to happen to you, right? We can go back to Matthew, and we'll go to chapter 5. And we'll go to uh, verse 14. It says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it gives light unto all that are in the house. <clears throat> Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. So your light is when you are a, a living embodiment of the works, of the good works. If you're following after the example of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, right? It says, and glorify your father, which is in heaven, which is why your works have to glorify the heavenly father and not try to glorify and justify yourself. That's another sign of somebody who's moving after the flesh. They're trying to get numbers. They're trying to get people to follow them. They're trying to get converts for themselves, not understanding that you're just a branch, bro. And the fruit goes to your Howard. Because let's let's get this in, Um, I think it's uh, 1 Corinthians. Let me see if I can find it. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6 it says I'll read verse 5 it says when who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers by whom you believe even as the Lord gave to every man I have planted Apollos watered but Yahweh gave the increase what is Paul saying yeah, I planted the seed. Apollos allowed it to grow, allowed it to manifest, probably teaching to him daily. But who gave the increase? Ultimately, the increase came from Yahweh, because Yahweh has to give you the spirit to be able to allow you to come and continue to move uh, in this truth and continue to grow. It's nothing that you did. It's nothing that another man did.
but it's all unto your how. That's why if somebody gives you credit, thank the Heavenly Father, because it's only really the Heavenly Father who even gave you the proper understanding to get to where you're at. Verse 7, it says, So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watered, but Yahweh gave the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with Yahweh. You are Yahweh's ministry. I mean, you are Yahweh's husbandry. You are Yahweh's building. According to the grace of Yahweh, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But every let every man take it heed how he buildeth thereupon. And that's why if somebody gives you some type of understanding, you give credit to them, and you allow them to continue to grow. Not everybody's going to want to listen to my message. And that's another thing. A lot of people like to sit here and say you have to use your words a certain way. And you do have to use your words carefully. But what I mean is certain brothers speak a little bit more harsher. Some brothers is more funny. Some brothers is more calm. It's not necessarily about the way that they teach, but the edifying of it. As long as it's not offending and going against what the Bible says to do, there's nothing wrong with how a person may teach. You may not like how I teach because sometimes I get, I, you know, I, I get very um, direct and I tell you what it is straight up. And I use a lot of, um, you know, parables to break things down. Some people may not like that, bro. Some people may not like that. That's the, then if they don't like that, they can go somewhere else as long as they get the proper understanding. But it's only the only time where you got to really be going off on somebody is if they're not getting the proper understanding and they're not edifying somebody and they're allowing somebody to become a man of flesh compared to a man of spirit. You see what I'm saying? But it's not about your numbers. It's not about your congregation. It's not about how big you are. It's not about how many precepts you remember off the top of your head, but whether you're leading somebody to righteousness or into wickedness. And most people are being led unto wickedness whether they want to believe it or not. So you have to be able to understand that, right? And you have to understand this as well, which is why for those of y'all who scoff and mock and talk shit about our, our Savior, about Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, it shows how how simple-minded and how void of life you are. Let's go to the book of uh, 2 Corinthians. We'll go to uh, chapter 5, and we'll go to verse 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Hamashiach, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, our thing, all things are become new. So for you to be a new creature, you have to be in Hamashiach. In order for you to say that you are converted, Yahweh Shah has to be in you, man. That's why in the scripture, there is a reason Matthew, it says their eyes are, are blind, their ears are dull of hearing, lest at any time they should be converted and I should heal them. His spirit has to come in you and reform you and convert you. And that's why you, again, you have to look at the worst because there's many different quote unquote spirits of Hamashiach, which is essentially the different doctrines, the different understandings. The true doctrine of Yahweh Shai is going to allow you to become a spiritual man. And you can tell a fruit, or you can tell a tree by its fruits. You can tell a quote unquote man of the Lord by the spirit that he walks with. If the spirit of what he's teaching, because essentially when you listen to a man's teachings and you follow it, the same spirit that they have on them comes on to you. And there's many different congregations. That's why some congregations, they follow the same things as Christianity. Some congregations, they're very harsh. And a lot of times what they do is they'll cause you to commit sin because you're following after them. And also when you follow out of these doctrines, you sometimes you lose the, the love of the brethren. You see what I'm saying? A lot of brothers really do got hate for their own brother. They'll never sit there and admit it and they'll try to justify it with their works. But essentially, through the spirit, you can tell that they have a spirit of hate. And you also have to understand, hate is not a bad thing in the scriptures. Because essentially, the Lord hates wickedness. The Lord hates abominations. The Lord even hates a, a particular nation. So there's nothing wrong with hate. But the scripture says to love thy neighbor as thyself. And one thing that you have to understand is even if you are in the truth, even if you're, I don't even say in the truth, even if you're trying to get into the truth and you have knowledge and certain people go off, you have to have mercy and grace and allow them to understand. Not saying that you're justifying their wickedness, not rebuke them. Sometimes you got to rebuke them harshly. Or not, not, don't try to rebuke them harshly, but you rebuke them with a, with a very, uh, uh, how do I put it? A, a tone that a lot of people will be like, damn, what's wrong with him? Why is he talking to me like that? Because essentially you're just austere. You know, when you're austere, you have a certain tone unto you. But essentially, the scriptures say 
to pray for those so that they can get some type of understanding. Because if you pray for somebody who's going against what you're going for, who's going against Yahweh Shah Mashiach, and you're praying to the Heavenly Father to remove those blinders, essentially, it shows that you have forgiveness, first and foremost, and two, that you care about their well-being. Because open rebuke is better than secret love. You can't sit here and say you love somebody if you're not willing to try to correct them on their ways, but also understand that ultimately they're in the same position that you were in when you first came into the fold. If I was a person that I was from the beginning, I would get rebuked constantly. If I was talking to myself when I first came into truth and I was talking shit about myself and everything that I did and I didn't understand that it's a process, I would have cast myself off. Because when I first understood you know, certain things about the Bible, Bro, I was still doing all type of stuff. I was still smoking. I was still drinking, bro. I was still constantly watching, you know, the videos. You know, I'm not going to say it, but you know what I mean by that. The videos, the X, you know, things like that. And there was a lot of other things that I was doing, bro. So ultimately, I took time. A lot of brothers take time. Not every brother tomorrow like, oh, call hello, how about me? I'm shy. I know every scripture. I know every word. If you don't get the scriptures, then we not. the Lord's not dealing with you. Like, how do you know that, bro? How do you know that? A lot of y'all have no patience, which is why y'all cast off your own brother, somebody who's trying to be sincere. And essentially, if you cast off that person too early and you offend them and you cause them to not come into the fold, that might be blood on your hands if you weren't trying to properly teach them the way that Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, Hamashiach taught. Not meaning that Yahweh Shah, when somebody constantly went against him, he didn't rebuke him and say that you're not going to make it. But what he was trying to convey to you is just because you were a sinner, just because you were a publican, just because you were a harlot, didn't mean that you had no hope. A lot of brothers look and see somebody like, oh, you ain't got it. You ain't got it. Just because, you, and, and sometimes they may reject it the first time, but that's why you got to have patience and continue to do your work. If it's the Lord's will, that person will come back. If it's Yahweh Shai's will, that person will come back. If it's through the power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, that person will come into the fold. You just have to plant the seed and bring the message out there and not worry about it because ultimately you can't allow that person to be converted. You can be a vessel, but it's really up to the Heavenly Father, man. Really up to the Heavenly Father. Because if that was the case, then the Gentiles wouldn't have even been able to be engrafted in when Peter came because Peter was saying that they were unclean. Oh, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're like the heathen. They follow after the custom of the heathen. They're unclean. And Yahweh said what? You can't determine what's clean and what's unclean all based off of the physical appearance. But you got to base it off of the judgment, right? But getting back into the main point. It's like you, brothers. So I want to continue on and we'll just get into some of the works of the, of the spirit and then some of the works of the flesh. So let's go to the book of Galatians. We'll go to chapter 5 and we'll go to verse 16. It says, This I say then, walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to another, so that you cannot do these things that you would. So Paul is basically telling you what are the works of the spirit and what are the works of the flesh, right? Let's read it. Verse uh, 18, it says, But if you will be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. And what that means is, if you are led in the spirit to do spiritual works, you won't be bound into the law. Because if you are bound to the law, you wouldn't make it, and the Lord would kill you for all your wrong deeds. So let's get into it. Verse 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, a man sleeping with another man's woman or a woman sleeping with a, sleeping with a man when she's bound to another man, right? Fornication, unclean acts, bestiality, um, adultery, uh, incest, unclean sex, unclean works of sex, right? Uncleanliness, lasciviousness. This is where you can't control your lustful desires. Like a good example of lasciviousness is somebody who's a quote unquote pervert, right? They like to try to go out in public, they'll go in public and they'll brush against women in public and they'll try to purposely grab uh, their, uh, their uh, ass or they'll try to grope, you know, their breast seeds, things like that. Or a woman who essentially likes to go out in public and be dressed in nothing because she likes to get the desire of men looking at her. Lasciviousness is where you can't control your sexual lust. And a lot of times that can be constantly looking at half naked women on Instagram. Because essentially, bro, when you do all those things, you're just feeding, feeding your lust. That's why when you're around brothers, you don't want to constantly be posting pictures of half naked women, bro. Because essentially, you may be able to contain yourself. But when another man sees that, a lot of brothers got porn addictions. A lot of brothers can't control themselves. They see that, next thing you know, they're committing porn. And it's because they're watching porn. And essentially, it's because you as your brother, you weren't watching over them to say, hey, look, that brother can't control his lust. 
just just out of the brotherly thing, I'm gonna keep him. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna stop posting these things because I don't want him to go off. And a lot of y'all brothers, if you go off, speak up. Say, hey, bro, look. You know, it's ultimately at the end of the day, I'm having a problem with my flesh. So can y'all please stop sending me these things? Because just like the scriptures say, if a man is is offended from eating meat sacrificed unto idols, what would the brother do? He wouldn't allow those things to be around his brother. He didn't want his brother to offend. Well, sometimes it may be also the sexual pleasures. A lot of times you may be around a brother who's not trying to smoke and who's not trying to drink. Or a, a better example, because your brother shouldn't be smoking. But a brother who's not trying to drink, why? Because he can't control his liquor. And ultimately, you as a brother, you may try to hide liquor from him. You might say, hey, look, bro, you can't deal with the liquor. And just because you can't deal with the liquor, I'm not going to drink when I'm around you. Because essentially, you're your brother's keeper. You're watching to make sure your brother doesn't commit any type of sin or offend the Lord, right? Love thy neighbor as thyself. If you see your brother's going off, you try to put yourself in his position and find ways to help him from committing transgression. And ultimately, sometimes your behavior as a man, you have to stop doing things to to quit other people from offending. That's why I don't cuss as much in my videos. Not because cussing is necessarily a transgression against the Lord, but sometimes it can offend somebody and they don't wanna hear my message. And ultimately, I'm trying to be a vessel unto you how about me out shot. So whatever I do, I try to make sure I offend less and less and less the people around me, because I wanna bring people into the fold. You see what I mean? Now continuing on, another work of the flesh is idolatry. Idolizing what? Other guys. Idolizing what? Yourself. Idolizing what? A woman. Idolizing what? Another man. Putting that person or thing above the Heavenly Father and worshiping it as if it's your power. Creating idols and things like that. Witchcraft, which is what? Astrology, divination, seances, backward seances, backward divinations. A lot of the, a lot of the occult practices, practices given unto them by Aleister Crowley. You brothers got to be very careful. You got tarot cards. You got Ouija boards. That's all witchcraft. And the Lord said, do not allow a wish, to, do not suffer a wish to live. So if you practice astrology, if you practice um, divinations, monthly prognostications, you look at the stars, you worship the sun, you're a witch. And the Lord's going to kill you unless you repent from your wrongdoing. All you brothers got to put away that stuff. There's a lot of people who say that they're Israelites, but they believe in astrology. How you say you're Israelite, but you believe in witchcraft? Uh, again, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, bro. So you brothers got to rebuke that. Also, um, hatred, having hate towards your brother. Variance, variance is division. And this is a key thing because although a lot of brothers have disagreements in doctrine, you can't constantly be at variance. If somebody disagrees with you, say, okay, he doesn't agree, and just say, hey, look, I can't be with you unless we come to the understanding and just keep it pushing. But one thing that you can't have is have a, a, a long-seated content, a long string strife. There's certain brothers that I know who are Israelites that I don't talk to them. We may have disagreements, we may have fell out. That doesn't mean I necessarily hate them. That doesn't necessarily mean I keep bringing up the same old ass joke, trying to mock and, 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 and talk down upon them. Because ultimately, you're not perfect. There's a lot of doctrines that y'all probably went off. And if I sit here and I look at your history and look at all the doctrines you went off, I could be like, oh, bro, you really believe that? Oh, brother, you really believe that? I mean, bro, it's like sometimes you do joke on these things, but ultimately when you keep bringing those things up, it's because in the back of your mind, you still have some contention towards your brother. It's that simple. I'm gonna continue on though. Wrath, wrath is what? Anger that turns into trying to act out the wrath. Like if somebody cut you off on the road, you wanna pull up to him, cuss him out, pull out your gun and shoot him. A lot of people have road rage. That's nigga shit uh, um, actions. Those are nigga actions. What I mean by that, those are carnal minded actions. If somebody did, like a lot of times people may look at me, sometimes they be staring at me, mad dogging me. And in my mind I get mad like, yo, what, what you? And then I'm like, it ain't even worth it. Let me calm down. Because essentially the scriptures say to be angry, but sin not. There's going to be times where you're angry. There's going to be times where you're upset. People can come to you, talk to you crazy, do all type of things to offend you, but you can't sin, right? Meaning what? You can't kill that person. You can't rob from that person. You can't. And, and essentially, I would even tell y'all brothers to not wish ill will upon those people if it's not necessary. Now, sometimes, hey, you know, with that, it's a, it's a gray area in regards to the cursing like placing curses on people, but ultimately you brothers should try to refrain yourself from those things because that brings a lot of malcontent, that brings a, brings a lot of maliciousness, and that brings a lot of um, like strong emotions that you brothers want to abstain from. Now continuing on, strife is again contention. Seditions is uh, leading um, like rebellion against the government. You know those people come and they try to break the system and they try to topple the authority essentially that's up to your how about shimmy shot you do the work of your how you do the works of your how you follow after your how the kingdom will naturally fall and that's what's happening right now 
brothers coming out, brothers sharing a word, sisters sharing a word. We're coming back into the Heavenly Father, which is why the kingdom of Mystery Babylon is breaking quicker and quicker and quicker. Because the quicker the Israelites come back into the fold, the quicker this place can be judged, right? So essentially, sedition is where you try to take things into your own hand. You try to be like, like uh, Huey Freeman from the Boondocks. He's a quote-unquote domestic T-word, domestic terrorist, things like that, where he's trying to set up different um, insurrections against the government to try to topple it from the inside out compared to just allowing the Heavenly Father to do his deed. Another one is heresies, lying, false doctrines, bringing up false lies and, and false doctrines, right? Envying, envying one another. Murderers, drunkenness, getting drunk all the time, constantly drinking to the point where you can't control it, and reveling. And there was a, you know, um, you know, a post from uh, the Brother Kingdom Path in regards to reveling uh, due to a congregation going to the club. And this is my opinion on it. As a man of the Lord, as a woman of the Lord, you should try to abstain from going to worldly places because no, it's not a sin to go to a club. But essentially, if you're very low in the faith, essentially what's going to happen? You go to those environments where people is partying, people is getting drunk, people is smoking weed, people is doing cocaine, is you're allowing Satan firsthand avenue to come in, at you, come into you. Satan can't come into you in your house. And what I mean by that is he can't go into a vessel to cause you to go off if you're in your house by yourself. But if you had a club, if you had a place where people are reveling, if you had a concert, it's so easy. People have coke, people have ecstasy, molly, people have all type of drugs. And once you allow that to come into you, you allow yourself to be taken over by those demons because those demons come onto you from other people, right? And if you're a clean vessel, you want to stay as far away from those unclean vessels as possible. And now, it's not possible. And ultimately, at the end of the day, when you're in Babylon, if you were to apply that to everything, you couldn't go to the gym. <laughs> you couldn't go to a basketball game. You couldn't go to a football game. Shit, you couldn't even go to half the bars because half the bars have, quote unquote, half naked women. But essentially, brothers, as a man, as a woman in the faith, right? You have to know what's a place where the spirit can dwell in and where's a place where, the, where, where demons and where Satan lies to try to take you off the fold. And any smart man is gonna try his best to abstain from being around in those places. Because again, if you don't have the willpower to abstain from those things, you will offend. Let's go back to the book of um, Mark chapter nine real quick. This is the book of Mark chapter nine, verse uh, 15, 45, it says, Mark chapter 9 verse 45 it says it is, and if your foot offends you cut it off it is better for you to enter here halt into life than having two feet cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched and if your eye offend thee pluck it out it is better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire so essentially what that's talking about is certain things are causing you to offend you got to cut it off if you or a brother used to go into the club and get lit and turn up and pop bras randomly in the bathroom, bro, you got to stop doing that. Because ultimately, the places that you came where you reaped flesh, if you were in the spirit and you go back to those places, again, you're giving Satan firsthand access to come and allow those demons to try to come into you and allow you to offend to the Heavenly Father. So it's better for you to avoid than to go there and try to fight it. Just like example, it's easier for you to, uh, to abstain from lust by not being on social media than going on Instagram and looking at something and then saying, oh, I can stop myself. That's the issue that I've had with a lot of my sexual uh, lust from my past dealing with, you know, pornography and things like that. One thing that your mind tries to justify to do is say, okay, instead of me completely abstaining from it, stopping myself from doing these things, I'm gonna look at it for a little bit. I'm gonna go on the, I'm gonna type something in a little bit. I'm gonna look at it, but I won't fall into it. Again, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. If you know your flesh is weak, you wanna keep your flesh from anything that's gonna cause you to get weak in faith. So that's what reveling is, is when you go out, you go into parties, you go into, um, you know, raves, mansion parties, you're around people getting drunk, getting lit, you know, you're you, you, you going crazy, you're going buck wild, you know, that energy that Lil Uzi has, Playboy Cardi has, ASAP Mob has, and essentially, that's the, that is the, the frequency of the people of this world, to just revel, go crazy, go buck wild, and have no constraint in their actions. And essentially, this is what's going to happen to you. It says, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in the time past, that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom. So if you do these things and if you're led by these things, you're not going to inherit the kingdom. You're not going to make it, no matter what anybody tells you. That's why the scripture says, be not deceived, because a lot of people will say, you're not going to make it if you do those things, but you'll come back. That's not true, bro. You're not going to make it into the kingdom if you reap 
flesh in your body. Now continue on verse 22, it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, and I'll explain long suffering. Being able to suffer for long periods of time and be patient that the Heavenly Father is gonna you, deliver you through those things. If you don't have long suffering and patience, it's gonna be very hard for you to make it through the tribulation and all the things that are gonna come upon the earth. Goodness and faith, meekness, being meek means what? Understanding that you do have certain gifts and certain talents of the Lord, but staying meek, being humble. Understanding that you're still a lowly man at the end of the day, right? Temperance, temperance meaning being able to restrain yourself, being able to control yourself, not going off on the deep end, not drinking to the point where you drunk all the time, not going out and getting lit to the point where you're going off and you're doing things of your flesh, being meek, not allowing your anger to go overboard, constantly being angry and mad all the time, not being on a video game all the time, not being somebody who just has no control over yourself because I forgot the name of the scripture, but essentially it says a man without the spirit is like a city without walls, meaning you don't have any type of defense into the point where you can stop these, 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 uh, these demons from coming onto you and allowing you to transgress. So it says meekness, temperance, against such there is no law, meaning if you live after the fruits of the spirit, you're not gonna be judged based off of the law because you are a spiritual man. Verse 24, it says, and they that are Hamashiachs have crucified the flesh, meaning what? You've killed the flesh, you've killed that nigga. That's why I said, you don't wanna be a nigga in the truth. You killed the old nigga inside you, right? With the affections, crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Meaning you gotta move in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Not trying to get the glory of men, not trying to get vain, vain glory on this side, provoking one to another, envying one another. So those essentially are the things that you should live by if you want to be considered a spiritual man. Otherwise, if you don't do those things, you're going to be deemed as what? A carnal man. And you're going to be killed off just like a carnal man. Always remember that, brothers. And also understand, here's some more things that allow you to move through the spirit. This is the book of Peter, chapter 4, verse 3. It says, For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, uncontrolling, uncontrollable sexual desires, right? Lust, excess of wine, reveling, banqueting, and abominable idolatries. So essentially when you were a man in the world, what did you do? Every weekend you like to go out and party. Maybe not all the time. Some of y'all didn't like to party, but a lot of y'all like that club, like Jake love that club. Like, you know, there's a song like, watch how I walk in the club. You trying to be that dude in the club, bro. You trying to be on the wall, have your Balenciagas, had your Jordans on, like you, like you hot shit, but you didn't realize that you were really just being a lustful man. And you were moving after your lust in the club, seeing what chick you could get. Oh, she got a man, she coming home with me tonight. That's why they give you that club bang, that R&B, that 